got permission from a female psychologist, man, to have your wife send you racy pictures. <laughs> yes, that's worth the cost of admission. Now, I'm going to go a little bit off script because you talked about social media, and you all already know that we have issues. All right, one of the downsides of, of being married to a psychologist is you get to talk about your issues in front of everyone else. So I told you about the shrimp affair, all right? But now I'm going to talk to you about my Instagram problems, okay? Now, we talked about ladies. Let's talk about men. I'm going to bear my soul. I'm a man that loves Instagram except when my wife is on it. And I'm cool with everything except when you take pictures with other guys. All right? And so my wife's having a bunch of pictures with other guys, arms around her, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, oh, I know him, I know him. Who is that? <laughs> and even though I trust my wife, it's the fact that when you look at it, and you start thinking, do other people know that that's not her man? It kind of looks like they could be together in my natural crazy mind. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. So I said, hey, we need to have a conversation about Instagram. Dr. Lewis said we need to talk about boundaries. I don't think you should take any more pictures with men whatsoever on Instagram. Then show me the one you're talking about. He said, guy, I don't know. Who is this? She said, fool, that's your cousin. I said, no, that's, that's my second cousin. And that's not verified. And it's five to one. Five to one. Now, five to one is a magic number because it, is, it indicates that your relationship feels good. Right now, you're thinking, if there are not five positives for every negative in your relationship, you do not feel good about your relationship. And what we know about relationships that break apart, they're more like a one-to-one -one ratio. Every good day is followed by a bad time. How many of you ever argue on the way back from a date? Someone just messed it up. You saw a good movie, really. Oh, I mean, I saw Amistad. She said, oh, that was funny. I was like, <laughs> movie by Slater was funny? That was funny to you? That was, that was amusing? She was like, babe, no, there were parts in there that were comical. I was like, so us being a slave and fighting on that was funny to you? I totally undid the date. And then I looked at the review. Funniest movie. <laughs> you have to have a five to one ratio to be able to make it through. Now, a prerequisite to having that five to one and a prerequisite to getting involved in a relationship that works is that you have to be an optimist. You have to be a positive thinker. This is important to you in sales. You'll know that you're basically going for no. You're trying to get to 10 no's to get to the yes. And if you don't have a positive perspective in your relationship, you're going to find opportunities that you missed to be able to say, we can make this work. But sometimes we say, it's not how I'm built. I said how I feel, that's how I am, I can't forgive. I straight don't chase her, that's what I say. <laughs> but that doesn't work, it doesn't work. And what we know is that negative thinking leads to something that Dr. Gottman talks about called a harsh startup. And what we know is how you start the conflict is how it will end. And so sometimes we come in, hey baby, how was your day? We need to talk about this Instagram. We're gonna have a talk about this Instagram. But what you should say is you should balance it off with five to one. You say, baby, you know what? You look so beautiful. You know, baby, I love the fact that you had these cooked meal. I know you work just as much as I do. When I came home, there was a meal in the refrigerator. It had salmon, and I had an intermezzo, and then I had dessert, and then I had a, uh, another dessert. Baby, thank you so much for those meals. Thank you so much. I mean, I appreciate you talking to my mom, and thank you for taking our daughter, and I appreciate, I appreciate you for all that you do. But then you do one thing for me, babe. And then you stop talking to your single girlfriends about our relationship. I would greatly appreciate that. <laughs> now what I did was I used the five to one ratio. And you all know about the five to one ratio, don't you? Don't you? Oh, you've never gone for a performance review, have you? 
When they sit you down, don't they tell you the four or five things they like about you first? Oh, you're a great performer. Oh, you went into that hostile territory. You took it over. Yeah, you've totally taken business for that company. You've done it. You've been a team player, and you train the eight people that have been in rotation. And you can't keep, you train them on each and every one of them. But unfortunately, the way our quota is set up, <laughs> 150% of your last year's goal, we're not going to be able to give you a raise. They do the five to one. Because if they don't say the one, they know we get mad and we'll quit. But you say, we can't get you raised. Oh, but what about those eight people that came in rotation that I trained? What about that hostile territory? I had to pass out chicken wings all day just to get those nurses to get the doctor to come up here. And I know that's off budget because that got to knock down the last board meeting, but I paid for those chicken wings. We have to have the five to one. And you heard Simon talk about earlier today. He talked about a book called Mindset. And in that book, it talks about talent being overrated. And it talks about, and I relate, there's no such thing as being bad at relationships for life. We would say, I'm just bad at relationships. This is just not what I do. When it comes to me and women or me and men, it's just not, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do this relationship thing. Untrue. What she found is that you can start at one level, but you can learn and you can make perfect adjustments to your partner and you can get better at relationships and better at marriage. Marriage and relationships are not about being perfect. There are no perfect people. It's about making perfect adjustments to one another. 